What's up, hobby friends? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to turn the default or basic cardboard tokens you get with all of the Marvel Crisis protocol sets into something a little bit more premium. So the tokens that come in all of the Marvel Crisis protocol boxes and kits are basically cardboard cutouts. They're printed on cardboard, double-sided, and then you punch them out. They're functional, but they don't feel very premium. Not like acrylic tokens that you can get off of Etsy or other third-party sites. However, if you don't want to pay an arm and a leg, and because you already come, or you already get all these tokens with all the models you buy anyways, why not just spend a little bit of time and we can get these cheap looking tokens looking and feeling a little bit more premium. We get a black trim on there, we get a bit of gloss, and then we also add a bit of dimension to make them feel more like acrylic tokens or buttons as opposed to just cardboard cutouts. So the tools that we're going to be using, we need a, a flat surface or a board with some blue tack. And this is to be able to move all of our tokens around. And we want to keep the tokens in an area that's dust free. And um, I have animals in the house, so I want to be able to move them all very quickly and easily into an area that's free of animal hair. The blue tack will be used to secure the tokens onto our board. We're going to need a black sharpie, something with a thick tip. We're going to need some sandpaper. I'm using Fine Grit 600. We're going to need an old brush, uh, just some water to clean the brush. And then we're using two different types of Mod Podge. So I'm using a, uh, a matte medium for the edge or for the trim. And I have this uh, preloaded into a smaller container, just makes it easier to apply. And then we're going to be using Mod Podge Dimensional Magic for the tops and bottoms. So the first thing that we want to do is to use the sandpaper to trim the edge lengths. You can see on this cardboard cutout where it was secured to the actual uh, board itself. We have some uh, paper trimmings and we're just going to use our sandpaper and we're going to very quickly just sand down the edges and make them smooth. Once we've got it smooth, we're going to take a black sharpie and we're just going to quickly using the flat of the tip. Uh, we're going to shade in the edges. So we'll give that a minute to dry and once the Sharpie is set and it's good for, um, for handling, we're going to protect the trim using our Mod Podge mat. To do this, we're just using an old flat brush. This is essentially like uh, PVA glue, um, but it dries much, much clearer and without any sort of uh, yellow filming uh, that happens typically with PVA glue. Um, very handy because this Mod Podge comes in a variety of finishes. You can get them in matte satin, gloss, ultra gloss. It's almost like applying a coat of gloss varnish, varnish um, but it also behaves like PVA glue. So it's useful for uh, gluing down papers and other, other materials. So once the Mod Podge that we have applied to the trim is dry to the touch, it's now time to apply our dimensional magic to the surface. So using our blue tack, we're going to take a little bit and we're going to secure our token to our flat surface. We want to use just enough blue tack to ensure that the token isn't going to shift around, but at the same time, not too much to create an unevenness in the surface. Because this is a, um, a fairly liquidy application or a material, if the token isn't completely level, the liquid will shift and it'll cure unevenly. And you don't want to have um, a bumpy or a finish on a token that's sort of raised on one side and flat on the other. So you want to make sure the token is completely level on the platform. And then when we set the platform aside to dry somewhere overnight, that the platform itself is also completely level. So we've secured the token to the board. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our Mod Podge and we're going to apply it to one side. This is a fairly um, liquid material, not too viscous, but it's not going to drip over the edges. Um, the, I don't know what the scientific term for it is called, but once you apply it, it's going to hold to the edges and not pull over. So when you apply it, um, it's actually fairly easy. Just be careful not to shake the bottle. And when you apply it to not create any air bubbles. 
with if you do they're actually incredibly difficult to remove and honestly the only way to really correct it is to get some tissue paper or paper towel wipe it clean and then redo it before it starts to cure we're just going to start in the center we're going to gently squeeze the applicator bottle to slowly and gently release liquid onto the token surface without creating bubbles if you move too quickly, you create bubbles. If you move too slowly, or you squeeze too hard, you'll release too much and you'll create too many bubbles. So the approximate quality we want, or the amount we want, sorry, is to create just a little touch of milkiness on the top where the token is still visible, but there's clearly a layer of the Mod Podge on top. Now, the bottle says that it takes about three hours to fully cure, but because we're applying it in such a thick application, while the surface may cure, there's going to be stuff underneath the surface which may not fully cure. So you're going to want to set this aside for a full 24 hours. Let it fully cure, harden, and when it dries, it'll be clear to the touch with a bit of a roundness to the top. And that's going to give us our nice premium acrylic token feel. Once one side is fully cured, after 24 hours, we then flip the token over using blue tack to secure it ensure the surface is level, and we Mod Podge the second side, setting it aside to dry for full 24 hours, and then we're done. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my other social media profiles. I'll drop a link in the description below. Until next time, happy hobbying. Hello one.